right, it's about half past seven in the evening and today is the 6th of July and all our Japanese trees have now been released from quarantine. Just to show you some of these massive cork bark black pines that we've had. This is another of our pines which we've had. These are all sold. Whatever we brought in, they're all sold. So you can't buy these ones. But we have these massive cork bark black pines. Just homing on the corky bark. So these, as I showed you in an earlier video, they are potted in this sand which comes with the trees. So we're going to put it in more of an organic mix which has Akadama and our fine pine bark so that there's less sand. So we have about 10 of these large cork barks. Walk through with me and I will show you that. They're absolutely massive. And if you've got to check with me about the prices. They're not that dear, but we have 10 of these. And then we'll show you some more. These are the Itoigawa junipers we have. Absolutely massive. If they're photographed on their own, you don't realize how big they are. But when I stand near it, you then realize there are more Itoigawas. So these are relatively dear trees because they're quite old trees. Again, we have about 10 of these massive trees. Beautiful shari, beautiful trunks. So let's walk through it. We are unlike other nurseries where they have maybe just one. We have about 10 or 20 of these. 10 or 20 of these. And then we've got these small cork barks. Look at these small cork barks. These are under 100 pounds. So nothing to do to these. You just grow them on and grow them bigger. But I will change the soil on them. And then of course we've got these which are like 300 pound large Japanese five needle pine. But I'm going to work on some of the Kotobuki pines. I'll find some of them because there is a lot of potential and they need to be um, wired so that they look their best. Let me find them. So let's walk around. We may need to switch the camera. So here we are. These are more black pines and these are the ones that I've put it on so have a close look at the compost that we've used it is not a mixture of the pumice volcanic grit and akadama this is only like i would say 30 percent akadama and about 30 percent pine bark and organic material like our garden compost and the rest of it is the Japanese volcanic grit. So it's akadama, organic material, and the pumice or volcanic material. These are the ordinary Japanese black pine, but look at the size of these. They're quite large trees, so there are quite a few. We've got another 10 or 20 of these, and you've got to ask me, email us for the price because they're all individual. And then there are smaller cork bark black pine. Look at these massive cork barks here. So we've got these cork barks, and then we've got these, these are also black pines, Kotobuki. I'm going to work on some of these to show you what I can do with them. So there's some more cork barks, so many cork barks, hundreds, we literally have hundreds. So do come to the nursery, they're selling fast. And these. These are just about a hundred pound each. Beautiful little trees. More cork barks. So I'm going to work on one of these to show you what we can do. So let's go to the back green house. Oh, I forgot these. We have so many that over overlook them. So these are also available. So I'll show you what I can do to improve these. Okay, so let's take two of these and make a useful little video from them so let's go in so these are another type of japanese black pine it's called kotobuki koto means small so this is a type of black pine with very small needles 
It reminds me almost like some of the mugo pines, named mugos that we have in Europe. And the habit is fairly similar. Well, to anybody, if they were given this, they would be over the moon that it's a nice bonsai. But it really is a piece of untrained material. And there are so many branches, so we can figure out some way of improving it. So let's look at what we can do. If we just trimmed it in a conical shape, in a right conical ball shape, people would like it. But I think we need to create some structure in the tree. So without cheating, I haven't looked at this tree even. So let's see what is in the tree and let's see how I can improve it. There are a couple of thick branches. This is a thick branch. That leader is also thick, similar, similar thickness. The rest of the branches are thinner. So the question is, should I use the thinner ones? Yes, I think so. What shall I do with the thick one? I know that if I keep this, it'll thicken the branch. So, quite a lot of choices to make. I think if I put a big piece of wire, a thick piece of wire on the center stem, I can probably create some movement. But even if I didn't, I can still make a fairly interesting tree. So this is what I normally do. I study the tree to see how I can create a branch structure. So that's the first thing to do. See a possible apex. that every tree is going to be different. So, I can't decide whether to get rid of this thick branch there. Probably I should. Because it's out of character with the rest of the branches. So let's get rid of that one. And wire these together. Okay, just let's do some wiring and see how it turns out. Let's assume that this is going to be the front. So of course, once you buy these trees, for those of you who live in the UK, you can do what I've done or experiment along the same principles and see what turns out. But I certainly wouldn't leave it like a big blob. I'm just going by the feel of the tree. I'm just going by the feel. So if this is the front, I don't want too many poking me in the eye.
this is rather at odds with the rest of the tree so let me reduce that a little bit I don't want to scalp it too much there's always a danger you take too much off You see, I'm aiming to create that conical shape. Anything long I can take out. I can't decide whether this is appropriate or not it's coming from the same point it's going up there i could wire there i don't want to remove it completely in case it creates too much of a void or a ugly space so that's why i'm hesitant about removing it completely let me just wire some of these other branches and see what happens so i'm exercising a lot of care a lot of restraint Many people seem to think that I just cut at random and without any care or consideration. It's not like that. You've got to be very careful what you take out. You see that overall shape is what I'm trying to maintain because that's quite pleasing. It's a bit congested up there. So it's too congested, I want to just thin it a little bit. It's a lovely species, there's so many branches. If you have a lot of branches, you have a lot of choice to make. If you didn't have many branches, then the options are limited. So your scope for creating is limited accordingly. I can't decide whether to keep this or to remove it. See if this side is a better side. where I should really rush. I think there's a lot of scope for improving it. Now this is too close. I can wire this and fulfill that space. So what I started off with that as the front is probably going to end up as the back. So the point I'm trying to make is that it shouldn't be just a blob or a ball. We're trying to create the branch structure to show branches. There was a time when black pines, Pinus tangbergii, were not permitted to be imported into the UK, but uh, they have now relaxed the rules. just thinning some of these back branches. This upper one I'm keeping because I want to fill the space there. So I'm breaking a lot of rules because it's coming up and then uh, 
sprouting from there. The wire I'm using is one and a half mil wire. I know I'm saying it in case people wonder what the gauge is, but always remember that you've got to use the appropriate gauge to suit the situation, meaning that sometimes the branches are stiffer than others. So you gauge it accordingly. There's no hard and fast rule. So you can see that structure already. You see how pleasing it is. I've only applied a few pieces of wire. So many, so many branches. This really is great fun. So I'm just creating as I go along. See how pleasing it is now? And more some of these. So it's got a more structured look rather than, than just a blob. One more piece of wire. I don't want to go too crazy. So just a little bit of work, you've ended up with this. Now I just asked Josh to home in on it while I go and bring another tree which has not been wired or trained and we'll compare the two. So, this is one that's not been touched. You see how dense it is? And this is another one like that, untouched. But you see what you can do by opening it out and creating a more structured look. So I hope that gives you some idea as to what the potential is in trees like that. So that was a fairly easy one, done in a few minutes. Now this is another black pine. This is another type of black pine, not the Kotobuki, but I think it's I've been wired in an S shape. So these trees I would say are about five years old perhaps. But just to give you some ideas to how fast pine grows, these are our own Scots pine seedlings, Pinus sylvestris. So they were this high about two or three inches high in April of this year. These, believe it or not, were the candles. Can you imagine? They were candles in April. And look at what the candle has become. More than a foot long, 30 centimeters long, left the candles unpruned. This is how the candles grow. So these black pines are very similar 
to what uh, the Scots pine do. That's another one. So look at it. All 30 centimeter long candles which were left unpruned, I deliberately leave it unpruned because I will now, or people who buy them, just to show you what you can do, you can just put a bit of wire and create the S shape in it. I don't know whether this wire is strong enough. very easily so there you are you can wire it at this stage into that shape and get a very recognizable scott spine with an s shape so that's what you can do these are seedlings that we sell very cheap these are black pines that come from japan again these candles have been left unpruned otherwise they were a small short tree but anyone who buys them can grow them longer and make more defined S from the top. So let me see if I can do something interesting with that. Again, let me just find two mil wire, stay there. So I'm using two millimeter wire, which as I've always pointed out, is probably the most used gauge of bonsai wire on our nursery. A very useful gauge to have around. And I'm looking for the leader here. So the object here is to continue making the S so that I get a taller S-shaped tree. Now just because I'm doing it in an S-shape extended S, it doesn't mean you've got to do an S. You can experiment and try and see what else you can configure and make from these trees. much fun so if you just trim the ends it stops the candles or the young shoots getting longer and longer so these I can keep wiring the branches as well like so I wouldn't take up too much time let me just do the odd one remember that when I teach I principles and if you understand the principle you can adapt it to your situation you can wire as well. If there are too many branches, don't have them. So you get the idea. So what was a squat tree? We're making it into a bigger S shape with these imported Japanese black pine young plants. So you can see what we're doing with our own Scots pines. If you didn't want to buy the black pines, you can use the Scots pines and get exactly the same effect. So these are the basic principles for wiring pines. There you go. I hope you've enjoyed this little video with our black pines. So have fun. Okay.